All right. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the unroll surface command and talking about a few ways to use Rhino to your advantage when building kind of complex geometry uh, in the real world. Uh, if I had something like this, I have a kind of triangulated face here and a planar parallelogram face there with a circle in it. Um, and I could definitely come in and measure each of these faces out uh, and try to come up with an angle uh, that all of these would, would be uh, built at. Uh, and, and that's completely doable, uh, but sometimes it's nice to just try different things out uh, and then, in a way, make a pattern from it. Uh, you can imagine, you know, as a tailor cuts a shirt, uh, there's, a, there's a flat piece of fabric and a template above it, and that template just makes sure that that shirt comes to the right size when everything's said and done and, and moved into place. Uh, so I've taken this, and if I type unroll surface, I'm given a couple options. I can explode it, which means that each piece would become independent and I can also label it. So right now I have explode to no, so this is all going to be one continuous piece, and labels yes. That's going to help me assemble it when I when I actually make it in the real world. And we can see here in, uh, in the top view, I'm given uh, kind of reference numbers and uh, an unrolled uh, part from Rhino. So I know if I cut along the exterior here and then dashed uh, along these heavy lines in the interior, I can turn off the ISO curves. These lines here, that's where the folds would occur to create this three-dimensional shape. Uh, we can see how these things start to line up. That, you know, see, number nine is the bottom. There's the bottom there. Number eight, this would be that side piece. Uh, so it's kind of helpful to leave those on as you construct uh, the, the model in the real world. Uh, looking at the, the different options, I'll undo this. And if I said unroll surface, uh, I'll explode it and I'll turn labels off. This would be the, the opposite options. And you can see we're giving four different pieces here. So I could make line work with Make2D and create a printout that would give me templates for each piece of my 3D model. Uh, the last thing I want to look at is, is curved pieces. So if I draw a couple curves, and I'm just going to do it in top here. Let me get this guy here and then uh, maybe we have uh, well I've messed it up there so let's let's come back and just do it this way I'll turn the points on and uh, hide this guy don't need that anymore I'll set this as my focal move the stuff so we're three-dimensional do another set down here great turn the points back on get some Z height Maybe this one dips down alright that looks great and I'm gonna say sweep two. so I'll use these as my rails and we'll have this profile sweep to that profile great so now I have this you know unusual surface uh, and if I say unroll surface it tells me I cannot unroll it because it's a doubly curved surface. Uh, this just won't work. The kind of uh, related command to unroll, I would say, is smash. Now if I smash it, uh, I can tell it, enter to continue, great. I select curves on the surface to unroll, we'll unroll along that, great. Um, and it gives me its best guess as to what this would be if it was completely flattened out. Uh, and if I just look at the dimension here, uh, in, in, in here, this piece would, there's no way it would give me something that large. The length is probably pretty close, but definitely not the width of it. Um, so let's, let's try it again and say, okay, we we'll are smash this, select curves on surface to unroll. Well, let's try this curve and this curve. Again, it's just not not nearly as accurate. Let's see. And it even shows it's a 35% smaller after the unrolling. So smash is, is, is something you can look into, but it's usually not going to be the best. Uh, 